Hey, what's up everybody? It's the Hyphenate here. And today we're gonna talk about the buffer size settings for recording versus buffer size settings for mixing and mastering. So every single DAW, Digital Audio Workstation, has a buffer size that can be adjusted in the settings. Now, I'm not gonna go into a full scientific breakdown of the buffer size and how it works, but I will go over the basics of what it does and what you should set it at for different scenarios. So one of the main things to know is the lower the buffer size, the lower the latency, meaning there's less of a delay. So when it comes to recording, you wanna have the lowest possible buffer size so that you can have as close to real-time tracking as possible. Now your DAW might have your buffer size values adjustable by either samples or milliseconds. Lower it as much as you can when recording vocals or live instruments. Now, a lower buffer size does require a lot more processing and is a lot more taxing on your computer, so it will reduce the amount of software instruments, plugins, or effects that can be used. So because of this, when you're recording, not only do you want a lower buffer size, but you also want your session to have as little effects, plugins, or virtual instruments on as possible. If you're recording with a higher buffer size, that can be problematic because it introduces more delay. It has more latency. So when you're recording with a higher buffer size, you're actually gonna be off time. But when it comes to mixing, mastering, or audio editing, it's okay to have that delay. And that's actually ideal because then your computer can handle a lot more plugins, effects, virtual instruments, etc. When you're mixing, mastering, or editing and you have a lower buffer size, it actually introduces more clicks and pops. And it can also cause more glitches, errors, or even crashes. So when mixing, mastering, or editing, definitely have a higher buffer size. Everyone's computer is different. Everybody has a different CPU, different RAM, sound cards, etc. And because of that, your computer will vary on how much it can handle. If your computer is still struggling with handling a lot of virtual instruments, plugins, or effects during your mixing, mastering, or editing phase, then you might want to bounce some of those virtual instrument tracks to audio files and work with that instead. And that way you can disable some of those virtual instruments and plugins so that it will put a little less strain on your computer. Now, when it comes to making beats, you definitely don't want your buffer size too high, though it doesn't have to be very low. If you're using a MIDI controller, such as a keyboard or MPC to trigger your virtual instruments, then you probably wanna have a lower buffer size. When you're recording and tracking with a MIDI controller, then it works just like recording vocals. If your buffer size is too high, whatever you're playing on that keyboard or MPC is gonna have a delay and it's gonna be pretty off time. Now, if you know that you're gonna be quantizing, then it's not that big a deal because if you're a little off time, then you can still quantize and snap to the grid so that way you can end up being on time. But when I make my beat making videos on my main channel, the Hyphenate, go check them out and subscribe to that channel, then I have a lower buffer size because I want as close to real-time tracking as possible so that way you can see me making beats and everything is on time and it doesn't sound off. <laughs> Now, when you're making beats, you tend to have a lot of virtual instruments and plugins on. So again, depending on your computer, you're gonna have to adjust that buffer size. My computer is pretty powerful, so it's able to handle a lot more with a lower buffer size. But even though I have a pretty powerful computer, when it comes to recording vocals or live audio, such as live instruments, then I still make sure to have a pretty empty session with very little to no plugins or effects. So just to recap, if you're recording vocals or recording live instruments, anything with the microphone that needs to be on time, then definitely have the lowest possible buffer size. If you're mixing, editing, or mastering, then have a higher buffer size. This will have a slight delay when you press play, but it's gonna result in cleaner audio. And it'll allow you to have a lot more effects, plugins, and virtual instruments on at the same time. Also, the delay will not have any negative effect on your final bounce of your song. So there you guys have it. Hopefully this helps. Please make sure to drop a like on this video. Drop a comment below if you have any more questions and please make sure to subscribe. I have a lot more videos coming soon. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.